Starting up today's discussion, we have Lane Chambers from Prince George Electric Cooperative and Nathan Frost from D Dominion Energy, Virginia. They've taken a different route here, and um, please turn over to the, the floor to Nate and Lane. Hey, good afternoon, and thank you, everyone. Uh, Congressman Griffith, thank you for your opening remarks, as well as your continued support with this initiative, and thank you to the UTC team for facilitating this webinar. Um, getting started, uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, I took the approach today. I really wanted to, to tell a story, um, learning from history. Um, I believe history is one of the most important learning tools one can utilize. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to cover the brief history of Prince George Electric Cooperative, the birth of Prince George Electric Cooperative Enterprises, LLC, and the evolution of rural band. In the fall of 2016, we began deploying a fiber optic network with the intent, just like most, to gain downline communications on the electric grid at a more granular level. From this initiative came the concept of serving underserved rural homes as an ISP and the birth of a pilot project referred to as the West Quaker Road Pilot Project. At this time, a group of electrical engineers, a lineman and linemen, along with the vision of a bright young engineer coupled with a lot of support from our upper management team embarked on a mission of uncertainty. As the boots on the ground were beginning to endure through the fog of war, preparing for the first in-home hookup as an ISP, little did they or should I say we know the impact we would have on our slice of rural America. With every install of Wi-Fi, as our members would refer to it, uh, I began to witness firsthand the life-changing impact this service would or could have on all of rural America. Unbeknown to many, this was the beginning of a cooperative effort and partnerships were beginning to form. Next slide. A vital part of rural band success begins with this first partnership, one of a unique kind, as a partnership developed with Prince George County here in southeastern Virginia. This partnership led to the connection of over 500 rural homes, bringing those homes up to standards some of their neighbors less than a half of a mile away had enjoyed for many years. Rural Band has since this initial partnership joined hands with leaders at all levels, working together to ensure broadband equality throughout the surrounding communities. Fast forward through the ups and downs, and you'll find us where we stand today, entering yet again into another, an additional partnership. This specific partnership is with rural Surrey County, and it would, be, it would prove to be more difficult as the locality in which we were partnering with had very little broadband availability to the citizens and covered two electric utilities service territory. To this point, rural band had minimal deployment on facilities on other utilities infrastructure. This project had the potential to be the most difficult and challenging to date. As plans were being laid and work was starting on the Surrey County project, a call came in to rural band of quite an intriguing nature. Dominion Energy was inquiring about opportunities to partner with rural band, aiding and serving those underserved in rural Surrey County. I have to admit, I found this to be potentially one of the most unique bonds that we could forge to date. Next slide, please. As conversations began between the two entities, it was clear that Dominion Energy intended to deploy a fiber optic network in which it would potentially have excess dark fibers available. It only took a couple conversations, though, sitting down with Dominion Energy's team to understand their idea of a partnership was much more than just leasing dark fiber capacity to serve their service territory. Dominion Energy was dedicated to this partnership and making this partnership one in which would flow very smoothly for the common goal of serving those who had been left behind for quite some time. Partnership has opened many doors uh, that would have been much harder to access had the two entities not shared a common goal. Uh, some of the benefits from that, this, this partnership has led to an open flow of communication uh, between Dominion Energy and Rural Band, the coordination of logistics, 
um, as far as the planning goes and building out, and also a direct channel to the various departments for both organizations. That that open line of communication is is tremendous to have. Um, one of the challenges that rural band had seen in previous deployments was curbing the expectations of the citizens in the areas which it would serve. A project of this nature takes time, and today more than ever, a timely deployment of a fiber optic network in these underserved areas is of the essence. Uh, we've seen in the past few weeks, working through the current pandemic, that, that life can change in a split second. Um, it, it, it truly can. Um, <clears throat> United, we have a very unique opportunity um, in working with Dominion Energy. Next slide, please. Um, here you, you see Lighting Rural America, the slide up here, and, and this slide really hits home to me because I have been intricately involved in various aspects of the deployment of rural broadband to homes. And in closing my piece of this presentation, which I, I would really like to share that this effort in lighting rural America with broadband really shares a striking resemblance to me of the first lighting of rural America through the, elect the Rural Electrification Act of 1936. This is a time of need in which America came together through cooperative effort, effort through partnerships, working with legislators and innovative minds to provide the rural areas with a tool to broaden opportunity and equality. I see today as an opportunity to learn from these successes of this initiative back then and learn from history. We have today entered yet another crossroads and through partnerships formed and common goals shared, place ourselves in a fine position to yet again light rural America. Next. Thanks, Elaine. <clears throat> again, this is uh, Nathan Frost with Dominion Energy Virginia. Um, give you a little bit of background about uh, who we are and kind of what our uh, rural broadband journey has been like. Uh, you'll hear a lot of the same themes um, that, you, that you heard from uh, Appalachian Power. Um, it, it's really a lot of those same fundamental pieces of legislation that uh, really created this opportunity. Uh, but for some context, um, Dominion Energy Virginia, we're based out of Richmond. Um, we serve about 2.6 million customers in Virginia and Northeast North Carolina. Um, we are a regulated, integrated distribution, transmission, and generation company. Um, we have about, it's approximately $23 billion in rate base. Uh, and on the right-hand side, you see a map of our distribution service territory. Um, the dark blue areas represent the areas we serve. Um, and you can see that it's, it's broad and diverse. We serve everything from the oceanfront in Virginia Beach uh, to the Allegheny Mountains on the border of West Virginia. Um, we serve major metropolitan areas of, of Northern Virginia, which are really just the, the suburbs of D.C., uh, Central Virginia, and then uh, down east, uh, the Tidewater area. Uh, but what you can see as you, as you look at the map is that we also serve a lot of rural, rural areas, um, and a lot of those are adjacent to cooperative territories. Um, the area that we're talking about today is the one that's in that red circle. Um, that's Surrey County, and it's hard to see, but there's really a, a, a river that kind of uh, runs north of Surrey County that separates uh, Surrey County from the Williamsburg area of Virginia. Um, Next slide. Uh, and this is kind of an overview again of our, of, like I said, our journey. It's it's really similar to what Appalachian Power walked you through. Um, the fundamental pieces of it really were the, the 2018 Grid Transformation and Security Act. Um, again, that was an extremely comprehensive piece of legislation and really laid out the framework for modernizing the distribution grid for the IOUs in Virginia. Uh, and importantly, it was uh, it really gave us the, the framework we needed to, to build out our telecommunications infrastructure. Um, that broadband feasibility study was one that was, uh, it was really just an enactment clause in there um, that really required the IOUs to, to look at can we serve and how do we serve uh, potentially as a middle mile provider in the state. Um, just like APCO, we filed in, in late 2018 
Uh, and then shortly thereafter, there was uh, the 2019 legislation, we call it HB 2691. That's the one that you heard about from Delegate Quinn. Um, and again, can't underscore just how foundational that is for this effort. Um, really the, um, the effort on behalf of our policymakers in Virginia are really the ones that deserve a lot of the credit here. They've, they've kind of um, really opened a lot of doors that maybe we otherwise would not have even been aware of. Um, but at, at the end of the day, it, it's that piece of pilot legislation that really, uh, that makes all of this go. It's really the oxygen in this initiative. A little bit of a different approach that we took um, last year um, is that we issued a RFI in the summer last year. Um, we really wanted to just cast as wide a net as possible. Um, so as part of that IS RFI, we wanted to solicit interest um, from both localities and ISPs. We wanted to hear from any and all, um, especially the localities. We wanted to hear, you know, what are your thoughts on, on broadband that's being served in your communities? Have you done any uh, work to understand what that served, unserved population looks like. Uh, and then we wanted to hear from the ISPs about who would be our potential partners going forward. Um, so it was a really good opportunity for us to inform ourselves uh, about the just the broadband uh, networks within Virginia. Um, and, and from that, um, since last summer, we've been um, in doing a lot of diligence and, and working through a lot of the feedback that we had there but developing uh, projects and partnerships, uh, like the one we're talking about today with Prince George uh, Electric Co-op and their um, subsidi subsidiary rural band. Um, we are uh, building towards a regulatory filing later this year. Um, so that's something that we're working on diligently right now. Um, as you heard from, from Brad uh, at APCO and, and Gigabeam, you can, you can tell it really takes a village um, not just to put a project together, but also to to bring forward a regulatory filing um, for consideration by our commission. Um, so that's what, um, in addition to doing all the hard work of, of collaborating with Prince Prince George to understand where we're going, it's it's also about building towards um, building a, a really good case that we feel like uh, um, it can get approved by our commission. Next slide. Uh, and here's a brief overview of, of the area that we're talking about. Again, it's uh, still very much under development and we still need regulatory approval of this, but this is a look at what we envision right now. Um, the fiber deployment that we see as part of our middle mile solution is about 42 miles along our distribution lines. That's represented by the dark blue lines that you see kind of um, going, uh, almost creates like a cross through the, uh, through the county. Um, and that's kind of where we're focused right now is on, on working through, getting through the scoping and design and, and working diligently with Lane's team to understand um, kind of what, you know, where do they need us, how do they need us, and making sure that, you know, what we're deploying here also serves very much a benefit for our operations and our customers. Um, so what you see developing here as you look at something like this on the map is, um, we're meeting a lot of different needs, both from, from Lane's perspective of being able to enable uh, broadband deployment, um, you know, for the citizens of Surrey County, uh, but also it's a win-win in that, you know, it can give us visibility, uh, better visibility into our operations within that area. Um, and, and just like you heard from, from the folks before, really when it comes down to, to rural broadband, it requires a ton of collaboration and commitment from all parties to, to really look for solutions. Um, that's at the local, state, federal level, um, both with cooperatives and electric IOUs. I mean, it's really all of the above. Um, and, and hats off again to my team. This is something that, you know, it's funny when you think back, uh, 2018 wasn't long ago. And when you think about how far we've come this quickly, it's, it's really, a, I think, a testament to the hard work from, from the folks in, uh, within Dominion and also with, uh, rural band. Um, so I know we've got a ton of questions and, and obviously there's a lot of uh, a lot of same sentiments between us and APCO, but again, just want to underscore the uh, uh, the admiration that we have for rural band and helping us bring this forward. It's It's been a great, great collaboration and partnership and we're really looking forward to, to bringing it to fruition. Next 